Knee pain is not random. The location of where you have pain can serve as a diagnostic clue to the underlying problem. And by understanding the source of your symptoms, you can then take the appropriate steps to treating your pain. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Peng here. Let's first start with pain above the kneecap. This is where the quadriceps, which is this big thigh muscle, becomes the quadriceps tendon and attaches onto the patella. Repetitive stress or chronic overloading of the tendon can contribute to its degeneration, leading to a condition known as quadriceps tendinopathy. Mechanical stress involving the tendon can also lead to the formation of bone spurs at the attachment point called an enthesophyte. Quadriceps tendinopathy can be easily treated with an exercise and rehabilitation program to support and strengthen the area. Pain around or behind the kneecap is most often due to something called patellofemoral pain syndrome. This is also known as runner's knee. Patellofemoral pain syndrome typically arises from imbalances or abnormal tracking of the patella. This then leads to irritation and inflammation underneath the kneecap. This is almost always caused by a combination of biomechanical problems such as muscle imbalance, poor alignment of the patella, or foot problems such as flat feet. Identifying and correcting the biomechanical problems often lead to symptom resolution. This is usually done through a home exercise program or physical therapy. Arthritis of the knee can also cause pain behind the kneecap. Arthritis results from the deterioration or loss of the protective cartilage that cushions and protects the bones. One distinguishing factor between arthritis and patellofemoral pain syndrome is the presence of swelling. Arthritis often leads to swelling, whereas patellofemoral pain syndrome does not. Pain in front of the kneecap, so that's beneath the skin but above the bone is often due to pre-patellar bursitis. This is usually characterized by a swollen and inflamed bursa. A bursa is a small fluid-filled sac designed to reduce friction and act as a cushion. Repetitive trauma or excessive pressure can cause inflammation within the bursa leading to bursitis. Ice, compression, and anti-inflammatory medications usually lead to resolution. But sometimes the fluid does need to be aspirated by a healthcare provider. Okay, so now let's move down below the kneecap. So the quadriceps tendon goes over the patella and becomes the patellar tendon as it attaches down onto the tibial tuberosity. Pain along the distribution of the patellar tendon is usually due to something called patellar tendinopathy. The patellar tendon plays a vital role in transmitting the forces from the quadriceps muscle down to the lower leg during activities like jumping, running, and kicking. That's why this condition is often referred to as jumper's knee. Just like with quadriceps tendinopathy, mechanical stress of the patellar tendon can also lead to spurring and enthesophytes. This is also easily treated with exercise therapy and a rehabilitation program. Another cause of pain in this region is infrapatellar fat pad impingement. The infrapatellar fat pad is a cushion between the patellar tendon and the bony structures inside the knee joint. This fat pad can get compressed, irritated, or inflamed. Symptoms typically include discomfort towards the front of the knee, typically located behind or around the patellar tendon. Next, we move to the inside of the knee along the medial joint line. You can find the joint line by starting at the inside edge of the patellar tendon and then running your fingers back and forth as you move towards the medial aspect of the knee. There should be a soft space between the two bones. Pain along the distribution of the medial joint line is either due to medial compartment knee osteoarthritis or a medial meniscus tear. Oftentimes, it's actually a combination of both. If we then go above the joint line along the most medial aspect of the knee, this is where the medial collateral ligament, also known as the MCL, originates. This is where people will have pain with an MCL sprain. The most common mechanism of injury involves a sudden impact or blow to the outside of the knee, causing the knee to bend inward. The resulting stress on the ligament causes it to get stretched and possibly torn. Pain below the medial joint line is usually due to something called pes anserine bursitis. Again, a bursa is a small fluid-filled sac that cushions and reduces friction between various structures. The pes anserine bursa is positioned between three muscles and tendons, the sartorius, 
gracilis, and semitendinosus muscles. Repetitive stress, overuse, and muscle imbalances lead to irritation of the bursa and subsequently causes bursitis in this location. This is something easily treated with an exercise and rehabilitation program. Now we move to the outside or the lateral aspect of the knee. Again, you can find the joint line by starting at the outside edge of the patellar tendon and then running your fingers along the joint line. Run your fingers back and forth as you move along the lateral aspect of the knee. You're looking for the soft space between the two bones. Pain along the lateral joint line is often due to lateral compartment arthritis, a lateral meniscus tear, or very commonly, a combination of both. Pain above the lateral joint line at the outside of the knee is usually due to something called iliotibial band syndrome. When the IT band is too tight, it actually rubs and causes friction and irritation. This irritation in turn leads to inflammation of a nearby bursa, leading to bursitis and pain. Stretching, foam rolling, and addressing underlying biomechanical issues typically result in symptom resolution. If we now go below the lateral joint line and feel towards the outside of the knee, we'll feel a bony prominence known as the fibular head. A nerve called the common peroneal nerve wraps around the fibular head, and this is a common area where this nerve can get irritated. Compression at this location can result from trauma, prolonged pressure, or repetitive activities that involve kneeling or crossing the legs. Nerve compression here can result in pain, numbness, tingling, or even weakness of the foot and the leg. The last area that can cause pain is behind the knee. One common cause of pain and discomfort in the back of the knee is a baker cyst, also called a popliteal cyst. This is a fluid-filled sac that typically occurs as a result of other underlying knee pathology, such as arthritis, meniscus tears, or cartilage injuries. Inflammation inside the joint causes fluid buildup, which then accumulates in the back of the knee, forming a Baker cyst. By the way, if you're finding this content useful so far, please click the like button. It will tell YouTube to spread the video to more people and help them too. Thanks for doing that, I really appreciate it. So those are some of the most common causes of knee pain sorted by location. But I wanna give special mention to two conditions. The first is arthritis. Knee arthritis can cause pain and discomfort almost anywhere in and around around the knee. This could be on the inside, the outside, around the kneecap, or even behind the knee. Pretty much anywhere there is loss of cartilage causing the bones to rub against each other will lead to pain and symptoms. The second condition I want to specifically point out are myofascial trigger points. Trigger points are hyper irritable spots of muscle fibers and can be extremely sensitive to touch. Compressing, stretching, or loading the affected muscle reproduces pain and symptoms. They typically are caused by one or a combination of trauma or injury, poor posture, repetitive movements, or chronic tension. Trigger points can also restrict range of motion and cause weakness. This can lead to chronic pain and limit functional activities. The most common trigger points that affect the knee are in the vastus medialis oblique, also known as the VMO, which can cause pain toward the inside and front of the knee. The vastus lateralis, which can cause pain towards the outside thigh and down towards the outside of the knee. The medial and lateral heads of the gastrocnemius, which can cause pain behind the knee, and the hamstrings, which can also cause pain behind the knee. The tricky thing with trigger points is that they are often overlooked and misdiagnosed, but there is a growing body of evidence that suggests that trigger points are probably one of the most common causes of all musculoskeletal pain. So check out this deep dive video where I'll show you what it is and what you can do to get rid of them forever.